Okay, continuing on with my build log of my Taro Ironman 680 multi-rotor. Um, one of the things I noticed in the newer versions, looking at the build logs on the internet, the newer versions have a uh, integrated PCB or printed circuit board for your power harness. For all your wires going to your ESCs and coming from your battery, there's a nice little neat board you can just solder everything right up to and it keeps everything organized and nice and clean. Well, it turns out this looks, is probably an older model, so it doesn't have that. It's just straight up you have to build your own wiring harness. So I had, I had a, a couple of ideas floating around in my head and how I wanted to do it, but in the end, you know, stuff, although it may be functional, it's still a potential failure point, and I decided to, to not go with all the crazy ideas I had, and I just bought a, a power circuit board for the uh, thing. The uh, problem was this one, the current rating was a little bit questionable. So I bought this one, and the seller advertised, I think, 80 amps continuous on this one. So I'll go ahead and probably use this one. It turns out the uh, mounting holes are 50 millimeters on center, and it's going to mount up perfectly underneath in the center of the craft. And then this little quarter deck right here it has these standoffs, and it's kind of in the mid-span between the two decks. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Mount this up right up flush on top so my uh, flight controller will be up on top. There's, there's just not enough room in there to do it any other way. Um, another thing I noticed is on the older models, I remember reading on the internet somewhere that there was problems with the older models with these arms and the way they fold and the way they go into these clips. Um, I think there, there was a, a later redesign and, or a change in material because these clips were prone to breakage. And I noticed they sent me a couple spare clips. So it's like, oh crap, man, I hope that's not going to be an issue. But we will see. Um, I also, after, so I'm going to get started here. I'm either going to build the, the landing gear first so it's up and ready to be worked on. I don't think it will interfere with anything else. And I have to um, solder up my, my uh, wiring harness. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to do some basic wiring up and stuff. Uh, I'm going to th do a throttle calibration on my ESCs and a, uh, one single programming change on my ESCs. So let's uh, get down to it and see how this goes. Okay, let's see if I can get through this here. We're going to do a throttle calibration on the ESCs. I've already taken my transmitter and bound it to my receiver. That's a separate thing. You should all know how to do that. The power to this receiver is going to come from the NASA um, IMU here. And I'm just going to go ahead and use AUX1 to X1. Then I'm going to take the NASA PMU, the, the PMU is the power management unit, and I'm going to power up the NASA IMU with the PMU and that's going to give me power to my AR8000 receiver and it's going to allow me to set my throttle. All this wire, all this jumble of wire back here so I can get my batteries hooked up. So if I take, this goes to X3 from the PMU to X3 on the IMU and then this one goes in the EXP. Okay, so now it should work. So now, take my battery over here and hook up my black and my red. Let's see what happens. Nope, turn on the radio first with the throttle all the way down. I've already set up a radio channel for the tarot. And I got nothing. Oh, it's on. Never mind. Okay, everything's on. The green lights are on. Looks like I got a, a loose connection here. I better be careful with this. I wonder if it's... No, it can't be this. It could be this. Okay, my radio receiver's on. It's kind of hard, but I have the... Hard to see, but I have the orange light. Now, I'm going to take my ESC, and I'm going to hook it right up to the throttle on the AR8000 throttle channel, which is this one right here. 
and I'm going to get, I found out that the ESC has to have the motor connected to it. So I'm going to go ahead, connect the motor up. Okay, so it says to power on the transmitter. I'll just turn it off right now. Make sure all this is going to look good. Power on the transmitter. And waiting for a power light on my... There it is. Okay, my receiver's powered up now. Now I, I set the throttle to high and power up my ESC. So we go black to black. And then we hit it with the power. Okay, then when it gives me two beeps, I go down. And one long beep means it's set. That's it. My throttle range has been set. So let's do that a couple more times just to make sure everybody's getting it, including myself. You try this one last time. First, we'll start with turning on the radio. And then we'll go ahead and we'll power up. See if we get our, trans our radio receiver to power up. There it is. Okay, radio receiver's on. Then we'll go ahead, we'll plug in ESC to the throttle channel. Wait before this, I'm going to go full throttle. And plug in the ESC. Now I'll power up the ESC. When you get two beeps, you go to the low throttle. Then you wait for one long, and it's complete. All right, throttle calibration is complete. Okay, here we go, part two of the ESC programming here. The, um, there's 14 channels on this ESC, and nine of them you are actually programmable. Going through the instructions here, which are actually quite good, I uh, got lucky I didn't... They're not all confusing or anything. At any rate, the, um, of, of the nine programmable items on these, the default is acceptable in every single case. So I don't need to change any of this. Although, on channel 12, it recommends the number of lipo, lipo cells, or the number of battery cells that you're using. It recommends that you set that. It automatically detects um, by voltage what battery you're running, and I'm running a 4S battery on this, but it, it says to program that setting. So, and, and it highly recommends, and the reason why is because if your battery voltage is too low, it might think you're running a 3S, and then uh, I guess the quad would run funnier, there'd be, there would be problems with your ESCs if it, you had a 4S, but it thought it was a 3S. Um, regardless of that, I'll go ahead... Um, I'm pretty good about the way I run my batteries. I, I, I don't like the voltages getting low, and I would probably be fine the way I manage my battery packs and everything just running um, on the default setting, which is auto-detect the number of cells. But I'll go ahead and attempt to set the cells. Um, actually, it's really easy. Um, hook everything up, power up your ESC, your transmitter, and everything. You power on your transmitter, move the throttle to the top position. Um, Power up your ESC, and, and um, once it, it detects the number of cells in the battery, you'll, you'll probably hear four beeps. Then you wait two, um, you'll get a musical tone. Wait two more seconds, or excuse me, yeah, wait two seconds, you'll get another beep beep tone. Then after five seconds, you'll get a musical tone, which means you're in programming mode. Then it'll give you the a, a series of beeps as to what channel you're on. I'll be looking for two long and two short beeps, which means I've entered programming mode. When I do that, move the throttle stick down. Um, when I get to, which would be channel 12, two long and two short beeps. And then it'll go through, it'll beep once for one cell, twice for two cells. When I get to four beeps, which is a 4S LiPo, I'll move it back up. And that will, um, it should detect it, that I've selected that. 
and then I'll get a, let's see here, it looks like another musical tone that I was successful. And then within two seconds, if I move the throttle back down, I'll, I'll exit the program. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to try this. Um, I just programmed one of them. I found out that powering up my AR8000 radio receiver through the NASA controller was a bad idea. So I've taken this out and I've come right off of the, the uh, PMU from the NASA and gone right into the AR8000. I've got that into AUX1. I've already got my ESC hooked up with a motor and I'm in the throttle channel. So let's see if I can get this to work here. Power up the AR8000. Turn on the transmitter. Full throttle mode. Power up the ESC, and when I get the, I'll get the two-beat tone, then a musical tone. If wait five seconds, get a musical tone, and I'll go into programming mode. When I go to programming mode, I'll move the stick to the bottom when I get to my channel. All right, let's do it. Wait five seconds. There's the musical tone, channel one, channel two, channel three. Now we're waiting for too long and too short. That's my channel. Too long. There's my channel. Now I'm in it. Wait for four beeps. Four beeps is equal to four S cells. One, two, three. Move it up. There, I've selected it. Musical tone and down within two seconds. And the Thor long beeps means I'm programmed. All right. We're going to do that one more time. All right. Power up the transmitter. I have my bind light. Everything's working there. Go ahead and go to full throttle. Now, power up the ESC. Got the two beeps. Okay, we're in programming mode. There's channel one, channel two, channel three. I'm waiting for too long and too short beeps. Okay, it's the next one. Put it down. Now we're going to wait for it to acknowledge the 4S battery, which is 4 beeps. Move it up. Acknowledge, put it down. 3, 4, and it exit programming mode. All right. Okay, so that was that. I've got the ESCs programmed. I've uh, done my throttle calibration. And I've set the uh, number of LiPo cells in my batteries to 4S, which is what I'm going to be running. One of the things I did was, uh, earlier I showed you I was running the PMU through the IMU and coming back and powering up my receiver. Turns out that was a bad way to do it. I just went ahead and came right off of this one into the AUX1 port and powered up my receiver. The only thing I had to do is there's a little, um, a little ridge on this which, makes it which allows you to orient it correctly when you plug it into the NASA. In order for that to be accepted into this receiver, I had to slice that ridge off of there. So, kind of didn't want to do that. It's still fine. It's just I just have to make sure I don't plug it in upside down now into my nozzle, which which I'll be careful. I won't. But um, 
Otherwise than that, that's definitely a better way of going from the battery to this plug right here, right to the aux one port and everything was done. Okay, next up is uh, building a wire harness or a power distribution harness. See you then.